Hi, this is Dr. Scott Young, and we're here with Silas Duguid today, and we're going to be talking about market-related issues and Nasara because Silas and I have known each other for the last three years, and we have actually had running conversations back and forth um, quite a bit. And so I want to start us off in prayer, and then we're going to let, let him kind of introduce um, himself with that too. So I just thank you, Lord God. I just, I come to you right now and we cover the people who are listening to us in, in a prayer. We just place a hedge of protection around the people that they feel your presence, that they feel your peace. The peace that passes all understanding will guard their hearts and mind. And we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Silas, tell me a little bit about what you, tell people a little bit about yourself and your Telegram channel. Yeah, Dr. Young, thanks so much for having me on. It's such a blessing to have known you for the last three years, and it's very exciting to finally get to share with the whole world, uh, especially where, you know, I've only been writing now for three years, so you're only my second ever interview. And um, yeah, so, you know, I've been on Telegram now. Um, for the last couple of years, just writing away of talking about silver, precious metals, financial markets, economics, uh, real estate, anything that anyone wants to come and just try to share and find the truth. You know, I think that's what we're all seeking. And, you know, you and I are part of the remnant that we're rebuilding. And I've connected with so many people and you've connected with so many people. And now we're building this network that is going to be basically unstoppable moving forward, which is why we're sensing a shift in the reality that we're in and um that's all god um uh, that's all you know yahweh at the end of the day right and um, so we're just so we're all blessed anyone that's listening to this right now is truly blessed and um you know your discernment um and as we go through some things i know you have some questions for me i'm going to give you some speculation it can be kind of an ask me anything uh, but i'm really excited to be able to share with your followers um you know, the truth about Nassara, because it's really, it really hurts me. It, it hurts me almost like watching a child kind of just get, you know, beaten up or whatever the case is. It's, you know, and all the horror stories we hear about the world today. And it's one of those few places where you're like, wow, there's actually hope over there. And, but people can't understand it. And then the enemy comes in spiritually, much like, you know, the Asbury revival, they come in and, you know, the, all the people that want their fame come in and you, you know, people like you and I are just sitting back saying, Hey, over here, we have like the truth and everybody's just like running to the other side. It's like, hey, so we're finally here to tell the truth and you know, we're just so blessed. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So this will be an ask me anything. And I'm really excited. I really am. Well, I think I think one of the things that Silence and I have done is, is really try to keep it, keep away from the fear porn. Um, you know, one, one of the things that I remember asking my sister as growing up I and mean, she was all into um you know into horror movies and i i was like what is it about the horror movies i mean i just couldn't stand it because it got me it, it would grip my heart it would really make me struggle amen and she goes, i'm in the same i'm in the same boat i was yep i and, i couldn't agree with you more and i would look at that and i and i was like why and she goes it makes me feel alive and the reality is that's where most people are. And so what, what fear does is it brings out adrenaline. And, and unfortunately, there is a type of adrenaline that we don't want to say the word. It's called achrome, but we don't want to get into that, that particular thing. But it actually creates in you a powerful adrenaline. It's and it, funny how and it's it called makes you feel alive. Although I wonder, so if uh, it's funny you say chrome, the achrome. Um, what else do we use every day that's Chrome? Oh, Google. So Google are they Chrome. changing us? Yeah, they're changing us spiritually. And if you look at the logo of the Google Chrome, it's six sideways, six sideways, six sideways. And then right. they fill it in. So they, you know, so they it's basically like a spiritual contract that they just put you under and boom. And you but you have to learn how to train your Google in a sense. Like I've been training my Google since 2007. So it knows me pretty well. We're all in right. this world together. Like we're all in it. Jesus walked this world. He he was in it. We have to walk our own world, but we also have to understand that there's a series of complex matrices. There's contracts. So if you want to get into maritime law, um, you know, the different laws that you can go down some rabbit holes there, but we're under this construct, this matrix that 
we're breaking one at a time. And people like you and I are, okay, here's the Nassara construct. Here's, you know, constitutional law versus common law versus maritime law. What are we under now? There's a whole a whole rabbit hole there. I've done a series of writings on that. Um, but basically, we're here to break this construct and break free from the shackles of the enemy, which is the devil. Exactly. Exactly. So let's talk about our first kind of uh, a question I just have, and, and we're not going to go in any particular order. I just got them written down here. Sure. Talk a little bit about the gold, um, the gold standard and pegging the gold in the treasury. So you and I talked a little about this, but I, I mean, I use some of your information, but it's really your information and you do such a good job of explaining that. So talk to the listeners a little bit about that. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm a I'm an astute historian. So as you know, if if anyone isn't familiar with the name Silence Do Good, that was the pen name of Benjamin Franklin when he was 14 years old. He uh, was writing for his brother's newspaper, and he was writing under the pen name Mrs. Silence Do Good. So he was actually writing as a woman, and which is ironically, um, but that kind of took him to where he was today. So for me, you know, I've grown up in a very unique setting. I, I'm a very private person for a reason, but I'm an astute observer of history. And, you know, particularly in the 1770s, we had this whole country that was just created from nothing. And then the British came in in the 1780s and they gave us hyperinflation because they said, you know what? We're so pissed. The king was so pissed. He said, we're going to friggin' wreck your economy. And he, there was rapid hyperinflation throughout the 1780s. So right. when people, people need to understand the only thing that people survived in estates like Monticello, George Washington's estate, those only survived because they all had a hard assets. They were trading paper at the time, but there was gold and silver. It was gold, silver, land, and livestock. That's basically how you created your wealth then, and that's how you create your wealth now, but they've changed the whole process around. So with a gold-backed standard, what that would say is it would basically be giving our government authority at that point to say, we, we accept you know, piece of paper, whatever that means of exchanges, we're going to guarantee it by a backing of gold. And that was totally removed from the people in 1933 under FDR's order six. I think it was 6102. You could look it up uh, March 5th, 1933. And then that removed us from the gold standard completely. And then, but they still allowed a system between the governments because at that point they were all corrupt and they already knew they were going to set up World War II. And, um, so they, they traded within countries, but they used the dollar under Bretton Woods to peg it um, so that the U.S. dollar was redeemable for gold for the rest of the world, you know, for the rest of the countries. And then in 1971, we all know Nixon ripped us off the gold standard, ordered Connolly to um, uh, ordered Connolly to uh, remove us at that point. And so basically we've, we've been running now. This is our 52nd year, 5-2, 52nd year in running a fully fiat 100% system. That's that's seldom ever happened for that long going back in in history and one of the books actually and i'll i guess i'll recommend him he's a very nice gentleman his name is ralph foster and it's the fiat paper money the history and evolution of our currency he literally made a book of every currency that went to zero which is guess what 100 percent of them every single currency in history going back three thousand years has gone to zero so what makes people think that this time is any any different I, exactly. have to use, I have to use probability to assess because I'm a financial planner and I do retirement planning. I'm series seven and I have, you know, so there's a, that, that's part of the other reason that I'm not, you know, coming out and using my real name and someday I will. But um, this whole world is it's morphing and changing into something. And people are finally saying, oh, wow, every currency ever made has gone to zero. Yeah. OK. Oh, so what are you exchanging? All oh, these pieces of paper, this I just click a button and it sends Sends what? They've totally taken over the whole system. The fiat is trash. If you're not buying gold and silver, if you're not buying gold, silver, land, or livestock, but even land is is manipulated nowadays. So you got to be really careful. You have to own. You have to have the title. You know, I uh, I'll give a tip to your followers. Um, it was um, uh, Dan, uh, a guy named Dan, um, out in California, who warned people. He said, um. Wells Fargo is not releasing the mortgage deeds and they had proof of it and it's happening all over the place, but no one's talking about it. So, whoa, whoa. So do we really own all of our property? So like you start asking questions and you know, where's the title? 
So if everybody just asked for the copy of their title, I bet you most banks probably couldn't even procure a title because they change title. They change titles behind the scenes, and right. then they use other derivatives. <laughs> which a derivative is a bet on a bet. So when a lot of people hear the term derivatives, it's it it makes it sound super complicated, but it's really not. A derivative is a bet. When you're sitting at a table playing playing a hand of blackjack, the you're playing basically against the bank. And that's a derivative bet. So if someone walks up to you and says, oh, I think, you know, I think Scott's going to win on this next hand. So I'm going to put a bet on that. That's a derivative of a derivative. And they yeah, but it's, it's a, like, but a better way of saying the derivative is, is it's, it's, it's a bet on a bet of a bluff. Correct. Because it's all based, it's all on, it's on sand. So exactly. if we use the parable, we built on sand, mm -hmm. we built on firm ground. So at this point, we're all in a point where God is basically saying, okay, I'm going to be pulling the rug, so to speak, like in a nice kind way. And I'm going to see who's on sand and I'm going to see who's on solid ground. And that's where we're at. Right. Right. So it, <clears throat> the treasury, when they flip, sorry, into the QFS, will it peg to a gold number or will it not? I, I believe it will. Um, <laughs> There's the, that's, that's more of a complex question. It, it will, but I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I think they're going to introduce the CBDC, but it's going to be very short and the people are basically going to revolt. And so that's going to be like the Boston Tea Party. CBDC is the Boston Tea Party. There's going to be people saying, all right, I'm done. I've had enough. I'm out. We're already seeing it with the ESG crap. Um, the ESG, there's a lot of pushback by states. I'm really happy about that. More states need to take action. It's actually not the federal government that more so needs to take the lead. It's actually the states that, to, right. um, if you look at it from a historical context, the states need to take control of the gold and silver, not treasury. Treasury is important, but treasury is kind of like, you know, that was one of the four founding branches of our government was treasury. And so it's a really, you know, it's really important that people understand that that role is not going away. The Fed is a sham. The Fed is a total scam and all the banks are in on it. They're all in on it. And, uh, but the treasury is, that's the founding. So you, everyone needs to look at that, but the states need to really ultimately step up and 10 states have, um, bills to make gold and silver legal tender at the right. moment. I think right. Kansas is interested Kansas is introducing one right now. Um, there's some states like, um, New Hampshire, Wyoming, there's one of the states they've done, um, gold and, uh, I believe they have gold, um, greenbacks. So they've kind of started that movement again, um, which is pretty fascinating. But it's really the states that need – they need to model the Texas bullion depository. Every state needs a bullion depository where you can have that physical gold and silver because it's great to have a QFS, to have the gold back treasury and all that. But treasury can't necessarily do it without all the states also being involved. And we all know that – we all, all right. know that California is not going to participate. New York's not going to. Um, there's already some states that – that do. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really up to the States. It's going to be up to the people. We are the people. We are this, we are this nation. We, people don't realize this, this country is still an idea. It's always going to be an idea. It's right. always going to be a concept. We, we just have to decide if we're going to break out of that construct that they've put us in, or if we're going to say, no, we're educated enough to know that that is not good. And we are not going to stand up for that. And let me tell you when CBDC, when they announce it, I think it's going to happen in July. And I don't, like to give dates ever as you know but if we do get a date it, it'll be july of 2023 because that's when they've the fed has been projecting that they want to do fed now since it's been at least two years maybe three that they've been projecting that and saying oh july of 2023 oh we're doing all this research we're doing all this testing like there, there's nothing to test they they know exactly what's going on we all know we're watching a movie if people haven't figured that out yet you are in your own little construct, but we're all watching a movie and, you know, we all have to break out of this and figure it out. And, but we all have the tools and it's you and I having these kinds of conversations to educate people that who actually care to say, Oh, that's an interesting topic. And then bring it up to someone else. And that's how you share ideas. And that's right. the whole purpose of, you know, the whole silence do good for me was to just emanate and share whatever information I could with anyone that was willing and able to hear at the end of the day. And I, I think that was kind of, so that was kind of a roundabout way to answer your question. So I hope I kind of gave I, I wanted to give you some more depth and character to. Um, and I think kind of that's 
one of the things that I mean, I know listeners are going to like quote on this one point here. We're, we're always going to have some disagreement with with people. OK, P- please don't freak out about what what silence just said. OK, he's talking about what people, the Fed people, the the Great Reset people, the central bank people want to do they they are projecting that July of 2023. Now we're in March 3rd of 2023. Um, that they're projecting that they want to have a, a central bank digital currency. Okay, they want that's what their dream is. Okay, um, now I would disagree with that. I believe that that is a dead dream. Okay, that's that's the kind of dream that you get at two in the morning and you 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 go back to sleep and you forget about it. Um, I believe that we're about ready to see the Nassara stuff, okay? Um, I think that we're gonna see the Nassara stuff and the and the dream, is, it's like the dream you can't even remember. Um, so that that would be something I would, you know, just have a little bit of, uh, and again, we're, we're doing some predictive patterning, patterning here. Scott, I think we, I can give your, I think I can give your viewers some, you know, solace on this because it's it's going to last for days maybe weeks if that it's going to almost feel like if 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 it, that's why everybody's been saying to prepare i've i've been saying that for a couple of years just prepare have your stuff like it's not this isn't this is just the beginning i mean that's the whole the whole point of the whole point of nasara is you know a new a new beginning and out with the old the old dies and then in with the new so i i agree with you in that sense but, um it's but yeah it's going to be very short lived Nothing really for your viewers to worry about other than they do need to worry about educating, you know, their fellow men and women that are willing to listen. So Right. And I, th- I think the reality, though, I think that they're trying to do it. I will say this. I think they're trying to do it now. I, I don't I don't think they're waiting for July. I think they're trying to put it in now because what I would say is the is all of the all of the credit markets are actually dying right now. Um I can tell you right now, I'm talking to real estate agents, to the banking people, to car markets, to um, a couple other, uh, um, couple other. I mean, not just like private real estate or what do, what do you call that? Um, what is the home real estate one term? Uh, Are a realtor? Yeah, just realtor. But then there's commercial real estate with that too. But you know, home real estate and, and then commercial real estate. I'm talking to all of those yep. people and mm-hmm. and they're dying. They're, they're literally dying. Um, you know, the debt is killing it. One of the things that I think is, is powerful that is the debt clock right now is sitting on, it, it's got a star by it that is never, we've never seen before. And it's a zero number. And and, yeah, I, and that's, due to the, that's due to M2 money supply. So if you look at the Federal Reserve, they control it's kind of like a, a barometer where they they kind of go up and down they pump sometimes and then they release sometimes but that that m2 is them basically sucking it's like a vacuum they're just sucking money and assets out of the system to try to like off balance it because they're trying they're yeah you're right they're trying to crash it right now they're trying to implement their new system now they just can't and work it, fast enough because the good guys in the last few years have really disabled them but it's and that's why i think they're they're fighting back and forth i think this is we talk about july i think it's i think that's the fight right now but but the reality is it's kind of like um i I want you to catch this guys what what he's really saying to you have you ever watched um the antifa guy who's the skinny little dude who walks up to the the patriot dude and the Patriot dude's the real strong guy, and the Antifa guy's the idiot, and he tries to punch at the the, the Patriot dude, and the Patriot dude just goes, looks over and goes, shut up. Bam, punches him one time, the guy's flattened. That's the CBDC. The CBDC is going to be, is the skinny dude that has no ability to do this. They are so dead in this whole thing. They have no ability to make this thing happen. Um that's how that's how little they got left. The fight is is a is a lot of hot air. So that's what I would I might just kind of say to you. That, now, yeah, no, when, I, you know, I agree with that assessment. They're they're gasping air with a straw at this point. Right, and, it right. is, and and this is evil. So we have to always be on guard and we always have to sure. 
make sure they're sure. making the right decisions because now now more than important than ever it's important to repent on a daily basis and to you know ask god to forgive us and to try to do you know again my you know the name do good in this world because we're at the point now where if you make one you know if yeah so it's uh yeah it but for your viewers it's going to be okay and you know we're going to get through this there'll be some i mean there's turbulence you know i i recently did some flying and uh there's there can be some turbulence here and there so but you're in your seat you're you have you have good pilots like scott and i and uh, we're yeah. gonna guide. We're gonna guide you through this because I mean that's the thing. It it takes when two come together that forms a church. So from a right. spiritual connection, you and I have you and I are pilots. And so like when you and say you interview Jeremy Whaley, you know you and him are pilots. So we're all pilots in this together. And uh, and by the way, when you know when a lot of the pilots have to start retiring, we're gonna we're gonna need some non vaccinated pilots. To, <laughs> that, that's kind of a scary thing if you think about what the next two years, what the prospects look like on that. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, it's going to be interesting to see how, how that's that right. goes. So let me ask you about this. Um, can you give a prediction? I mean, just a personal prediction. You know, we don't have to, you know, give you that idea, but personal prediction of the price of gold when it pegs, when we get, uh, when it does get kind of set in the number. Do you have a, a feeling? Yeah. So you know, I, I we can definitely look at the price, but I want your followers to really take home that it's not about the price; it's about the value of what that gold and silver obtains you post reset. So, you know, if le- the uh, example that's always fun to use is a $20 gold coin from 1910 is going to give you, it's, it would, it would have bought you a men's suit in 1910 that will still buy you a men's suit. It's gold is about 1800, 1850 ballpark. Um, so it'll still buy you the same, Things. So just know that when we transition into this new system, when you hold gold and silver, you will be able to obtain things within that new system when other people are more locked out in different ways uh, right. when the transition switch switches over. Um, but yeah, so but in terms of price itself, if you know if we're comparing Federal Reserve fiat notes compared to the exchange rate, um, you know you're looking at at least ten thousand dollars on gold. Um, wow. Probably, I, I, you know, I want, I, I, I think I'm in the $25,000 camp as well. It's going to be between 10 and 25. Mm-hmm. There's, it's more complicated than people can, can see behind the scenes. Um, but somewhere in that, in that ballpark. And then I think they might let silver free float. And if they did that, then, I mean, there's already a and, huge. I mean, and then they, they might, silver would be a great, uh, silver would be a great, you know, a, ability to buy that. I mean, afterward. That'd be a great one to go spend your money on, and and yeah. you know, I, you know, post you know, Nasara kind of thing. So absolutely, it's a it's a built up store of wealth. So when we transition into the new system, you'll carry that wealth over, and then it'll be like, oh, we're in this new system, but you know, people are still here, and everybody's still conducting commerce, but you'll just have way more buying power than than you did before. So, and I think especially if you have silver, because silver always piggybacks gold and so whatever gold does is really up to the governments but everybody's you know coalescing together and everybody's been stacking for the last three years then they've been taking gold and silver off the exchanges um you know i don't know if your viewers saw there was a pretty big development in uh, the cme and cf the futures exchange markets um they haven't been reporting data for almost a month that's a pretty significant revelation. I mean, they've stopped the data completely. There's a company called Ion out of, I think out of Ireland that they were using the data from and they got corrupted or something happened. And now all of a sudden they've just basically gone dark. So all the trading on gold and silver is basically, you know, it's all up in the air because no one knows for the last month what's been going on at these futures exchanges and at, you know, at these. And that's why guys, you have to know we are so super close. The bubble no, is incredibly about close. Pop. Yeah, we're so close. I, it's like, th- it's like I'm, it's like I'm on the Titanic and I'm looking around and I see like a cord snap and I see this snap and then all of a sudden you see the, you know the the freaking bow come down. And you're like, whoa, what is going on? Like the ship's still like I'm still standing. I'm still here, but I'm seeing all this all these things around me that should not be happening. So you know, if you right. almost sense like the Titanic from a financial market standpoint, that because I've lived and breathed this for the last 15 years of my life, and I've really made it a focus to study and be at the top of my game when it comes to 
financial markets and, and economics. And like, yeah, the Titanic, like some like that, the ship's about to break in half. And again, right. we'll still, you'll still have it. You'll have a tiny bit of time still if the ship breaks, as long as you're on the right side. Um, and then from there, it's going to be like gay gold, gay silver, you know, livestock. We, you know, we bought a dozen chickens um, last summer and we've been very happy with them. It also has a lot of, you know, great therapeutic benefits for, for children. Sure. So if you can get chickens, chickens are, I mean, that eggs, my, the eggs were my, that was my best investment in 2022. Yeah. It was my eggs because, because it was an investment in my property and then I didn't have to go buy eggs and I was just, I was giving eggs away to people. And when prices go way up on eggs, it's, um, you know, I want to be part of my community as well. So, you know, if we don't eat the eggs then we give them away and that's right. how, that's how humanity should be. If every other, if every other house only had like six chickens, there would be more than enough eggs for everyone. And then you could remove right. that from the supply chain distribution. The supply chain is, is, is basically breaking down yep. and we're at, we're at a critical juncture where people have to realize you're not going to get, you know, your fancy, you know, your fancy, um, fruits and vegetables from different parts of the world. Like it, you, you can, but you're going to pay a lot. And it's, uh, you know, I think going more local, you know, try to source local foods, try to support your local farmers and farmers. They know, they know about gold and silver if you talk to them and that, yeah, it's, it's just a great way to barter, great way to meet people, you know, get a better sense. Every, people need to be more connected to their communities. You know, myself, myself included, but I think we can all do a better job of trying to reach out in our communities that we live in and try to buy from a organic or a local farmer. Cause they're, they're trying to make ends meet too. And it is, it's really hard right now for everybody to, right. to be through this. So, but we're, we're all here together for, you know, as humans and we're all here to try to, you know, get to heaven basically is what, is what we're in, what we're in store. I mean, and Nassar is basically, is basically that. So talk to me a little bit about um, physical silver versus, you know, sometimes you have an IRA and you got paper, gold and silver kind of things. What's going to happen if you happen to, you know, have paper, silver and gold, you know, um, is it worthless? You know, how, how do they, uh, you know, how do they feel well, about I'm that? Not, you know, I'm not, I, I am concerned about products like SLV is, is, is garbage. So you want to stay away from that at PSLV, which is more the physical, like in their contract, it's physically states physical. I'm fine with that uh, a little bit more. So um, if, if there's no other options um, that my big problem is if broker dealers fail, you know, then those shares are held They're in the, they're in the name of the broker dealer. So you've transferred ownership from you and you've said, okay, Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard, you know, TD, wherever, whatever firm, Here's these shares. They say, okay, we'll register them in street name, end quote. And now they own the shares. So if something happens to them, now you're, you, yeah, you're PSLV. Yes, they, you know, Sprott Physical Trust has stated that contractually they're going to hold physical shares and they are physical bars and they do hold thousand ounce bars. But there's also jurisdictional risk with PSLV because PSLV is located in Canada. It's held by the Royal Canadian Mint. So people are saying, well, what if Justin Trudeau says call up call up the RCM, uh, RCMP, right. get some get some troops and bring the gold into Ottawa? So people are like, well, it's I, I don't know anything's possible, but um, but those do you think it's possible though that um, do do you think it's possible though that the the White Hats might be there to cover some of that because we're getting gold in and silver, you know, to kind of cover some of that. We do know the White Hats are doing a lot of that stuff and mm -hmm. going to be able to, you know, make sure that we cover some of those those potential stealing that that might happen. Would you say that's even possible or how do you feel yeah, about Yeah, no, we're being we're being protected. Yeah, we're being protected by the White Hats. Um, but it is very important for people to take control of their own personal economy. So okay. you have to make your own risk assessments. You know, every right. person should have a risk plan. You know, it shouldn't be a financial plan. It should be a risk plan because we all have different risks. And I've really honed in on my risk assessment since COVID. We started preparing food. Like, actually, I started stacking silver really hardcore in November of 2019 when I noticed um, there was a lot of cracks in the system then. So I started stacking 
silver then and I started stocking up on food. So there were already signs that were coming. And if you were astute enough, you could make those decisions. But uh, you each each one of your view, uh, followers has to assess in their own situation. OK, am I going to be part of a community like what 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 value do I bring to the table? Because we all bring value. We're all special. We're all created by God. You just have to say you just kind of have to take the dust off and say, all right, what am I good at? You know, what do I want to focus on in this new world, this new economy that we're going to live in uh, under Nasara? And, you know, and just and pray, pray to God, repent, say, OK, everything's going to be OK. And it wipes, wipes it clean every day. And right. that's just kind of how you have to live. And anyone that doesn't, it's just going to get harder and harder. If you can live for God, it's going to get easier and easier. So let's uh, shift gears a little bit. <clears throat> and um, if we talk a little bit about the stock market, you know, a lot of people are still waiting for that drop. But what Jeremy Whaley kind of gave us a good understanding that when you look through 2022, and he was just dealing with 2022, that we've actually seen as much as a 20, 25% drop in uh, the stock market and maybe as much as, um, I mean, Amazon went down by as much as a trillion dollars. I, I don't know if that's the exact number, but, you know, mm -hmm. um, Disney went down by $150 billion. I mean, there's just crazy numbers of drops with with many of these big tech issues. And they're getting think their much, in the think teeth. Of how much they were, think of, Scott, think of how much they were pumped up. Right. So these, right. these valuations are still... People are like, oh, well, they've lost a trillion dollars, and then that brings new people into the stock market. But people have to understand the stock market is a derivative, because again, right. who owns who owns all those shares? It's not you. It's Vanguard. It's BlackRock. It's State Street. It's Fidelity. Right. It's Van. You know, all all those firms. So they all they own the shares. So if you can't play with the big boys, then you probably shouldn't be invested in the stock market. You should probably be on <laughs> the sidelines. Because I mean, for someone like Jeremy Whaley, you know. There's 10% of people are very astute stock pickers and they're very good at trading. So if you're going to do that, you have to be very sure that do you want to be a short-term day trader. Do you want to be right. a mid-term <laughs> trader? Do you want to play the long game, buy and hold? Uh, do you want to be tactical? You know, so those are all things. Once you start collecting wealth and building up wealth, you have to assess all of those things at a holistic level. But, you know, each person is going to understand differently. But so I don't trade personally. But I I know that someone like Jeremy is an is an excellent person when it comes to trading, and you know people should if they're interested in the trading aspect they should really basically at this point we should be seeking out people that you know we have various interests and in, because we're God's saying it's it's time we're we're ready to go. But see, one what I wanted you to kind of predict a little bit is think about you know after the EBS hits. What kind of prediction would you say the stock market might be moving to um, when, you know, everything just, you know, everything hits the fan, you know, kind of thing? What would your what would your prediction be in that way? Well, there could be a period of time where stocks just don't trade at all. Um, you okay. know, if you assess those risks. There mm -hmm. could be um, if depending on if the Fed, because, again, the Fed is basically dead, but they can still they can still, you know, control and they still control a lot, but even though they're dead, um, you know, so they could, they could either, there could be massive deflation, like the depression, and then you would see prices collapse, but your gold and silver would still hold value, uh, relatively speaking, or they print money and turn on the money printers and just create hyperinflation, which is what they're more accustomed to doing, but it's probably an 80% chance they'll do, they'll try hyperinflation, 20% deflation. Uh, but whichever one they do, people that hold precious metals will 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 still do well from a stock market standpoint. Um, again, if you have deflation, stocks crash, liquidations, bankruptcies. Uh, if they hyperinflate, then it's kind of like basically the it, even though it goes to it, Venezuela is a good example of you want to look at the Venezuelan stock market because their stock market has been the best in the world for the last like six years, but they also have rampant hyperinflation. So it doesn't, right. it's like, it doesn't really matter at that point. And people aren't necessarily figuring out that that's, I mean, one of those two scenarios is likely to occur in the next 12 to 24 months. I mean, you, you have to look at who they put in charge. And even though I don't necessarily think Biden is controlling the situation, he's the puppet. 
he's the one that the the mainstream media people are still looking at, um, even though we all know he, you know, he has dementia. <laughs> but yeah. um, you know, it's uh so yeah, so I mean we we basically live, you know, in a the, the Truman show, um where we live in an upside down world, the Twilight Zone. Um, you kind of just figure it out. <laughs> it's time to figure it out, like the everything is just very crazy with what's going on. So as we kind of wrap up here, talk to me a little bit about what your um, what your feelings are. When what are you thinking about? You know, post Nasara. You know, predicting like you know it's coming soon enough. But but you know, what are your feelings are? What are what are you thinking about post Nasara? Just for yourself, what are you kind of um, looking forward to in that way? Yeah. So this might make a good opportunity. Um... I guess I'll, I'll plug your book a little bit because I very much respect your works that you do. Um, but also I, I managed to find my way into your book, um, right. which, was, which was a fun experience. And so maybe if I read that excerpt uh, yeah. from what I wrote, and it might take me a couple of minutes. Sure. But I think that would maybe it would essentially hit home for what I'm trying to say now, but in much in much more of a succinct and polished. Because, uh, I you know, basically, I, I think I told you the story. God basically said. He put it on my art. He's like, you're going to write for Scott right now. And I, I was sitting in my chair. I was like, okay. And so I just started writing and, you know, and I know it blessed you because you put it in the book. So right. um, I was very happy with that. So yeah, let's, um, well, uh, let me pull it up here. So um, in this believe, book, Revelations of the Red Pill, he's yeah, in chapter, here. So chapter nine, I think eight or nine. It's one okay. Of That's where the, yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, so I believe the mission and vision of any business can expand outward to serve more customers in a post Nassara era. Dreams can become realities. The time spent on bureaucratic red tape can go back into training, research and development, and rewarding employees with profit sharing. This will help the economy as more people enjoy the fruits of their labor, borrow, spend, and enjoy a healthier lifestyle with less stress. Humans are very nimble and can adapt to change under new and unforeseen environments. They will go through the five stages of grief, but will come out on the other side strong and better prepared to serve new clients in a new era. When income taxes cease, this will give the economy a sudden jolt. Things will balance out as some professionals may find their work meaningless or non-existent in the Nasara era. Others will be inundated with work, while others again may see the writing on the wall that it's time to start a business. The entrepreneurial spirit of America has slowly been sucked out of her, and it will gradually return. It will certainly return. The millennials may very well be the last generation of corporate grifters, while the young generation of kids under 18 have watched everything in the world play out. Recent statistics put high schoolers wanting to go to a four-year college at under 50%, down from 72% pre-pandemic. That is a sudden and dramatic change that I think, frankly, woke colleges are unprepared for, and they cannot see the difference that is about to hit them. Trade schools, non-woke, and community colleges are set to do very well in the years ahead. The system's invisible hands now rely on the government's bureaucracy to maintain enough of the status quo to keep people stuck in their nine-to-five jobs. Healthcare benefits are one of the biggest inhibitors, and 401k, dental and disability, insurance, and offer a steady paycheck. As unappealing as some aspects of doing something you hate, the trade-off is not having to deal with the litany of complexities to go out on your own. So people suck it up and maintain that status quo, not to mention the educational system has failed us. So people would be a lost puppy in a swamp to try to navigate the business world. Most people are disconnected spiritually from the physical world that we only live in temporarily. If you study pricing throughout the history of America, there was deflation throughout the 1800s with only minor bouts of inflation that mainly occurred during the Civil War. There were periods of hyperinflation in the 1700s when different monetary systems experimented with after the creation of the Fed in 1913, the third central bank since our nation's founding, the cabal have intentionally made inflation and deflation cycles that create massive booms or busts in the economy. I believe that the role of government should be limited, although I do think that they must protect the people from our enemies, foreign and domestic. I believe that the U.S. Constitution under Section 1, Article 10, grants the right of only the government to print money as legal tender. The Fed is a shame. <clears throat> And we work under the confines of admiralty law with codes and rules and the lands of the federal 
reserve are legally considered foreign lands. In the new system of NASARA, all professionals will need to be retooled and retrained on the inner workings, which is where people like Scott and I will step in to teach. However, I believe the truth will be so much easier for people to learn, but their souls will also connect deeper. The people will be aligned with things they want to do instead of things they are indirectly forced to do due to the lack of money or education. So Guys, I, I, think have... that, I think that pretty much summarizes and hits home. You know, when I do my writings, yeah. I want them to be timeless. And when you read that, I want that to age like a fine wine. Like if you read that 10 years from now, you say, yeah, you know what? That's yeah, that's what happened. And, and, and that was 14 months ago when he wrote that to me. I mean, you guys don't understand. That was like November of 21. November of 21, yep. Yeah, and it's like, whoa, wait a second. Do you understand? That's why this book was, well, I was really pushing it to get that thing done in December of 21. And, um, you know, like that book and my other one, Nasara, you know, and the Mark of the Beast. My books have like gone off the shelf in 21 and 22 and a little of 23. It's gone just, just dramatic. Um, lots of, lots yeah, of Scott, my, on that my followers, my followers love you. I share your work and I know they've supported you and I'm really happy about that. And um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's just the fact that this can age like that for 14 months and where we're at now is, uh, is really a blessing for the both of us. So <laughs> I appreciate everything that you do for the community. So guys, realize it's it's not about scary things. <laughs> They're trying to give you the scary stuff. But be calm. You know, take a breath. Like I'm trying to take a breath with my cough here. Sorry about that. Um, just take a breath. Realize it's going to be okay. Life is going to go on. Um, we're very close. I know it's very stressful. I promise you we're all feeling it. I mean, there's a credit crunch Everyone who's, I, I almost know, almost everyone out there is in the middle of a credit crunch one way or the other, okay? I know silence has his own major financial issues going on in his life, his personal life. And and listen, you know, the, it, it's very hard. Um, I have my own financial issues going on in my life. It, it is very tough. Um, and, and, you know, we need your support with that. <clears throat> More than anything else, we need your prayer. Um, because when truthers are out there, we get beat up like nobody's business. And, you know, just be calm. Just realize that, you know, there is a fundamental change in the world that's happening. And, and frankly, it's a frequency change. We, we actually call this in audiology a fundamental frequency. When you're singing um, and you hit the right fundamental frequency, it can actually break a glass. So for instance, um, you take a glass and if you hit the right frequency and the right volume for that cup, we can break that glass. So we're talking about the volume, which is the, uh, the decibels and the frequency or the pitch. And we hit that right exact frequency because that actually has a resonating frequency. We, it will actually destroy well, the world is going through that same kind of thing where that, that pitch has been off and it's been off for a long time. And as it starts to kind of come back and balance, people are feeling it and they're feeling out of balance in there. OK, and so that that kind of is is that one thing that comes in. I'm going to end it with this little weird story that is related to, <coughs> to this. So I've got a glass here with water in here. And my wife and I were in a church in Tulsa, and it's kind of a, a what's called a seeker-friendly church. This is a long time. My son was going to it. Don't want to give you the name because it's not trying to be a bad church. And we were in there, and it's before the church is starting, and we're listening to the music in the background. And my wife is, and it, and it's it's it was some secular music, and and I and I do not remember some ACDC or whatever one, and it, and I didn't even recognize what it was. I'm trying to figure out what it was. And my wife goes, that reminds me of when I was doing some stupid things in college. Okay. And we all have done stupid things. And, um, and <clears throat> it made her feel like her cup was spinning this direction. Okay. What happened <clears throat> the next second, they started doing a Christian song. And then it made her feel like she was spinning in this way. 
And what it did is it made her feel like her spirit was spinning, uh, was was having a vertigo kind of thing. And 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 that's what that's what the world is going through right now. They've been going in a particular direction in their in their situation, and now they're going in a new direction, and life gets funky for them. That's why you're seeing a lot of fighting going on. You're seeing a lot of people beating each other up. It's because they don't know how to get to this. When the EBS comes, <clears throat> we're going to see that same kind of problem happen a bit. And, and we need to have that peace that passes understanding. Um, so as we see that, we need to be praying that and praying that hedge of protection around the people. As we as we feel that we're gonna we're gonna know that and we need to keep that peace around the people with that too. So, do you have any final thoughts there? Yeah, amen, brother, to that. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, it's been a long time coming for us to finally do an interview, and um, I hope your uh, I hope your followers get a lot out of the words. And some people will probably you know try to poke holes. That's fine. You know, come on to my channel. It's um, on I'm on Telegram t.me forward slash family man 20181 and uh you can also check me out i i'm uh i've already built a website it's silence do good official.com silence do good official.com and that'll that will also take you to all of my platforms i'm on gab substack and truth social and those will be in the descriptions here by the way you can click on that stuff and you can Check them out, and I'll I'll have all those descriptions up on when I get this thing uh, loaded up here. So, hey, thanks so much. Appreciate it, Silence. Thanks, brother. Have a great day, everyone. All right. We'll talk to you later. Take care. All right.